Calculon's back, this week on Boss Battle. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Welcome everybody to Boss Battle number 159, a show in which the writers of InsertCoinToBegin.com get together to talk about video games. I'm your host, Bobby F. J. Tom, but before we get the infotainment and good time making of this podcast, let's see what everybody achieved this week. Chachi, how about you? What did you do? Um, Call of Duty, a little bit. I beat Mario, Super Mario 3D World. Nice. Woo. Uh, that was fast. Well, here's the thing. I would have had it beat last week. And then out of nowhere, they're like, bam, ninth level. <laughs> it's the like, Randy Orton level. Yeah, and I'm like, there's not nine levels in a in a <laughs> Mario game that has a, a level counting system. There's eight levels in mm-hmm. Mario games that have a level counting system. Maybe because it's in 3D, they decided to add a new one. Yeah, like, uh, but uh, so... I, I it's got, a multiple I got, of three. Yeah, I got so pissed off at the game adding another level that I didn't beat it for an additional week. <laughs> like, I do that. I, I just I, I went on. Str- you do that with every game. I know. Like, I know. Oh, Bobby, I oh Bobby. man, I don't like this game. I'm not beating it at all. No. Well, I got mad at Batman already, but I'll get to that later. But uh, yeah, so I, I took a week off because I was angry at it adding an extra level. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a completely ridiculous thing. Um, but I, I picked up a Super Metroid for the Wii U. Because um, I love that game. And if you're a gamer, you love that game. Um, and if you say that you don't love that game, then we can't be friends anymore. No. Uh, and I picked up a Walking Dead, uh, Road to Survival... Uh, Pokemon Shuffle and Katan. So Katan, Katan. Pokemon. Snap. All right, uh, Sorg. What did you achieve this week? Pokemon Snap. Hey, uh, sorry. Some more time with uh, Tomb Raider and Lara Croft Go, and uh, I just joined the 13K Club in uh, high scores on uh, uh, Pac Man 256. That's oh. it. That's been my life. Anytime I have some extra time. Basically, um, a loving to uh, again, Lara Croft Go is is completely the the Hitman Go crosses with uh, old school Tomb Raider. Just just really digging it, loving the puzzles and uh, and having fun with it. So that's all I got. Riz, what did you achieve? Yes, uh, I finished chapter one of uh, King's Quest, uh, Knight's Tale, or no, not a Knight's Tale, uh, a Knight to Remember. Uh, hey. They have puns for everything. If I didn't mention that before, <laughs> uh, I also picked up a certain game called uh, Metal Gear Solid, which I know I'm probably going to enjoy tremendously by the videos and all the other things I keep on seeing on the Facebooks and on the YouTubes and all that stuff. Um, and and of course, uh, Chachi forgot to mention we're both getting Mario Maker Friday the next Friday. Friday, <laughs> high five, <laughs> high five. Cool. But other than that, I really haven't been playing much games. I've been busy with stuff. Oh, and Rocket League. Uh, check out my video for Rocket League. Also, Chachi really has a video games. for Rocket League coming up later. Yeah, check check out my video for Rocket League. <laughs> really, high five. Coming up, coming up um, in just a few moments. Um, uh, since in my absence last week, I started playing Batman: uh, Arkham Knight. Um, I got scared twice, <laughs> and I haven't gone back since. <laughs> and Bobby will not play that no, game I ever I again. I'll pick it back up. No, um, and I, I just think Batman relies too much on the Batmobile. Like <laughs> the whole game, he's like. Well, we can't do that without the Batmobile. You got to drive it up this this uh, hill or this uh, building, and get it up there so you can power this thing that we have set up up here. I don't know. It just it, it makes me mad. Oh, I, Bobby, Batmobile. Bobby man. He doesn't. He's Batman. He doesn't need the Batmobile that much. Actually, actually, yes, he does, Bobby. 
Oh, whatever. He didn't have because, it in the first you know, game. Because, you know, he can't fly first, or first three games teleport he didn't or, or do any other superhero cool stuff like that to transport himself. It is kind of fun blowing up other tanks. So. Um, and uh, I also uh, downloaded <coughs> the free game on Xbox Live this month. Um, it's called The Deer God. Wait, what? what? The Deer God. Yes. Please, um, Bobby, Bobby. Bobby. Yeah. It Just is. Explain. It kind of is a like. It looks like an eight bit cross between Minecraft and um, Terraria, like graphically. Hmm. But you're the story of the game is you're a hunter, and you are killed, and you become a deer, and as the deer you have to. Do good deeds to other animals to in order to like survive and become like the deer god. I guess I don't know. What? It's it's it's. it's Bobby, I mean, is it's this a, it's is a this really re- is this really a game? It's or really a game. It's, right it's now? free on Xbox Live right now on, for Xbox One. It is like, very I mean, weird. Are you sure? It, are you sure you're not the deer god right now? I am. Maybe him. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. Yes. Anyways, uh, but yeah, that, that, it's a good game. It's it's pretty neat. Um, it's a beautiful game, I would say. Uh, graphically, wa- graphic wise, um, it has like that eight bit look, but it, it looks really, 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 really pretty. Um, just a weird story, though. Um, I also played uh, Simpsons Tapped Out and Fallout uh, Underground or Fallout Shelter, and couple other games uh pac-man i have nowhere near sword score on pac-man so all right chad you want to take us around the net it's now time for video game TV from around the internet no, 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 no. uh first up if someone can bring it up on the screen is an imager link to the greatest game display in the history of wall art uh, who sent that? Let me let me go back to the chat. Garza, I can't remember Garza. Who sent that. Garza, uh, Garza sent over uh, this uh, link from imager of a custom made wall uh, featuring a bunch of different artwork from Zelda games with the cartridges on display. Um, it's kind of incredible. One sec, one sec, I'll guy. There it is. Yeah. That looks that's so okay. So it's the cartridges too, and the discs and everything. Uh, displayed yeah. with some of the art, like what was that probably custom artwork in there? Oh, jeez, that's what it looks like. That looks awesome. I, okay, it shows how he mounted everything. That's cool. That's real cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, all right, first up, Japanese artist Taro Yamamoto turned Mario and Luigi into dr- traditional Japanese screen art, and it looks amazing. <laughs> um. So, I mean, you can check it out. You can look at the art in the YouTube video, but unless you understand Japanese, you're not going to understand the interview. So, <laughs> yeah. Just absorb uh, it. Ne- yeah, just... Uh, just sit there and absorb it. Maybe you'll understand it through osmosis if you yeah. listen to it enough. Um, or like that weekend where we spent watching uh, the Spanish channel on uh, Dish. <laughs> and by the end of the weekend, I was laughing at jokes on Sesame Street in Spanish. I just remember uh, there being GIF commercials and them like saying Spanish words, and all of a sudden they just go GIF, and that would make me laugh. I don't know why. Uh, next up, uh, someone decided to edit in uh, real uh, soccer announcer goal calls to goal. Rocket League. Yes. Um, to Rocket League, and it is incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, two minutes and fifty seconds, or two minutes and forty nine seconds long, worth every second, <laughs> every second. And I'm I'm just gonna say this right now: if you haven't played Rocket League mm-hmm. yet, you need to play Rocket League. What what uh what is it on? I, I don't recall. It's on. Everything I think. No, it's on PS4 and uh, PC. Oh, so just on oh, PC and oh, cool. yeah. There's rumors of it coming to Xbox One as well. Yeah. Okay. When, when it comes out, you guys need to play. Yeah. You had me at PC. 
Yeah. Also, also, uh, there's talk of maybe making this like a competitive uh, major league gaming an esport. An esport. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect for it. It's a sport. It's but a with sport cars. With e and s- cool, e cars. Yeah. <clears throat> RC Pro meets FIFA. Yeah. With sorry, sorry, Tachi. Continue. Oh, no, it's cool. I was letting you guys discuss it. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, uh, about a year ago, um, there's a song released in Japanese about the Slowpoke. Uh, now there's an American oh, no. version, or not American version. There is a Western Hemisphere version of the song <laughs> available. Oh. Um, it's done in reggae style, and it is incredible. Wow, um, I I love the song. I've jammed to it at least three times today. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, and that is all I have this week on Video Game Thursday from around the internet. Back to you, Bobby. All right, it's time for some things we should be made aware of. Uh, Guys, we're going to talk some Destiny here. Um, about a month before Bungie planned to release Destiny, uh, just before its head writer quit, the developer revised the game's story according to a recently filed court document. Destiny was going to be released in September of 2013 originally. However, the title, uh, the, the change, the the change story, it uh, bumped the game back to 2014. Uh, Martin O'Donnell, who worked for Bungie as a composer, recently sued them and won uh, in his. Uh, uh, Cases paperwork, uh, there lies an explanation of the events that took place in the studio between 2013 and 2014. Cross reference with publicly available information, it chronicles the game's troubled development and may shed light on what's coming in Destiny's second year uh, with more story driven content, such as The Taken King, which everybody knows is a very story driven DLC that they released for, for Bungie. Uh, my question to you guys is Are you okay with an MMO not having much of a story? Or do you prefer your games to have a lot of story, even if it is just an MMO? I think an MMO needs to have um, a lot of small stories. Mm-hmm. Keeps the story going, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. I, I, like, I, I think you need to be able to quit the story and go do other things and come back to the story. Um, kind of like uh, uh, Warcraft. Because, I mean, in Warcraft, there is an overarching story, but it's split up into hundreds of really small stories that you can go come and go from at all times. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I, I just think that that's the way it should be done. I don't think it should be focused on one huge, uh, continuous story. I, I I played a little bit of Destiny. Um, I kind of fell off because I, I didn't really have anybody to play with, <laughs> um, and I and I didn't like going in by myself to like face like hordes and hordes and hordes and hordes and hordes of bad guys, you know. And and that's what it seemed like most of the missions were to me. And without well, that's that, all, that is pretty yeah, much it. <laughs> yeah, and, and without that story there, it's kind of like, do I really want to do this? Like, is it worth it? But I'm, I'm sure the, I'm sure the new content. It, I've heard it's really like story driven, really good. Um, um, and, and, and the 2.0 update today. Yeah, uh, I was going to say that um, Peter Dinklage is gone. Guys. Oh, yeah. No more wizards on the moon. I mean, they're uh, still there. The wizards and, do come from the moon, but just. And also, uh, if you if you uh, want to download it, it is going to take a long time. Yeah. It is 17 gigs. Whoa. Oof. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of gigs. Yeah. It's a lot of gigs. A lot of gigs. A lot of gigs, so you'll be there for an hour. Wow. Even on high-speed internet? Yes. Good thing I have my trusty 56K modem, guys. Woo! Let me just handshake on your face. All right. Can we move on? 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guys, Ubisoft is opening a theme park based on their video game franchises. Yay. Ooh. The only catch is it's opening in Kuala Lumpur, Yay. Malaysia. No. In the year 2020. Uh, the 10,000 square uh, meter park will feature rides, shows, and other attractions based on Assassin's Creed, Just Dance, and Rabbids, according to an announcement from the company. It's going to be an indoor park and have uh, and you're actually interacting with the video game characters, uh, possibly holograms or something else, I guess. I don't know. Um, but this isn't Ubisoft's first foray into the theme park landscape. Uh, they have created an attraction in France's Futuro- Futuroscope, Park in 2014, based on the rabbits. Uh, let's hope though that they don't have a watchdogs part of the park that uh, leaves you broken, penniless due to hackers. Oh, they will. <laughs> um, I, my- oh, good. I am very disappointed that none of you joined in on my miming of a roller coaster. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> I, I I can't mind. Um. Uh, but my question to you guys is, would you visit this park if we were any closer to home, or are you willing yes. to make the trek to Malaysia? No. Chachi, Chachi, let's start with you, since you're such a big Assassin's Creed fan. Would you go to an Assassin's Creed park in Malaysia? I, hold on, I need to, come back to me, I need to look something up first. Okay. <laughs> Riz, would you go to a, uh, a Ubisoft park? A theme park, park in Malaysia? Yeah, or a theme, uh, in a theme park in Malaysia. Malaysia. Or, or just in general. Just in general. In general, would you go to a Ubisoft theme park? An Ubisoft theme park, yes. Yeah. In Malaysia, no. Continue. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, yeah, not Malaysia, but, but certainly if this is like at Universal Studios or something, I'd be all about it, right? Um, I love the idea of like a raging rabbits ride of some sort. Certainly. Uh, and, and, and just imagine like little mascot raging rabbits just hopping around the, 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 scre- uh, the streets of. This place, and just oh. Oh. you wanted to pet one, and, the and then they run away, and then the assassins, the assassins come out show. and stab them. It's going to be weird. <laughs> we'll have to no, go. Would not go here. You would not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, did you actually just look up where what Malaysia looks like? No, I I looked up uh, the Wikipedia page because I wanted to know what the native language was. Okay. Um, yeah, they don't speak English. I'm not going. <laughs> okay. wow. Well, it's okay because you That's... still don't know, understand what the rabbits are saying, anyways. They're universal. <laughs> well, I, I'm not worried about that part. I'm worried about being able to get from the airport to the theme park Voila. and back. Uh, the uh, Assassin's Creed. It's universal. It's universal, man. Yeah. Or just learn a French accent. Hey, hey, maybe. Since it's Ubisoft and it's Assassin's Creed, maybe we'll just lay in chairs one day and it'll transport us to Asia via the the, the uh, thing, the animus. No. Wow. It's 2020. It can happen. That's like five not, years from now. No, I'm not going there. Not even not even through the animus. No. What if you had a, what if you had an ancestor that lived in Kuala Lumpur, and he just so happened to live near the the Ubisoft theme park. Would you go through your ancestor, his memories, and go to this park? Wow. Bobby. Wait, Bobby, Bobby, did it say the name of that city in the article, or did you actually know that? Kuala Lumpur. It said the name of the, the city in the article, but I knew I knew it was Kuala Lumpur. Yeah, yeah, right. I did. I like Malaysia. No, I'm not going there. <laughs> no. All right. Malaysia is too far. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Riz, you want to tell us what uh, Jimmy Kimmel said this week to get himself uh, into some trouble? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, honestly, uh, like I said in, uh, in in Riz Plays Games and Might Make Opinions, uh, RPG, MMO, uh, I, I don't really think he, he said anything wrong. He, I, I, I think what he said wasn't right to say, but he didn't say anything wrong per se. He just thought that everybody who watches, who is a YouTuber on YouTube, who's a gamer on YouTube, is only just playing the video game without any like knowledge or any any thing, and he doesn't want to do things like that, and doesn't want to like 
there's no emotion or anything. When in other words, in other words, it's actually the total opposite of that. Wait, like wait. The people that are what, famous. What on did he YouTube, say? I'm not clear. What did he say? Uh, he said that he's not sure he, what the big deal about watching, watching people yeah. play video games. Okay, and, and it's his generation and, too. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 fine. What he guy. said, uh, and and like I said, the. the Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Sorg. Will you say something? Well, okay, and, and I think um, um, I don't get it, but I get that it's happening. And yeah, every yeah, podcast, and every top tech <clears throat> podcast that I listen to doesn't understand why this is a thing. Yeah. But still, like, and make fun of it I mean, and have fun at, with it. That's you, fine. Yeah. You look at the top YouTubers, like, not, not just in gaming, but out of everybody in in all of YouTube, they're video gamers. Mm-hmm. They're let's players. Like, like I mentioned, PewDiePie, uh, Markiplier, and those guys, those two guys that I mentioned. There's a whole bunch of other ones, but those two guys I mentioned are have that. I, I, I claimed it as a human element to playing video games. Right. Like they have the ability to like lose and show emotion when they lose. Mm-hmm. They get freaked out whenever Freddy Fazbear comes out out of nowhere. They they get they get excited when they beat a boss that's really hard to beat, and it that's why they have YouTube gaming now because they think that with this there's going to be a lot more PewDiePie's and a lot more Markiplier's and a lot more uh, it, angry video game nerd. There's there's going to be a lot more people trying to emulate those guys and they just want to send everybody over to that other site Mm -hmm. and, and stream it and do things with it. Uh, so if you want my full view on it and my full, my, my backlash that I have against the gamers who are like commenting and, and sending mean, mean tweets to uh, Jimmy Kimmel, which I can't say here. Um, <clears throat> and that's another thing. Like Jimmy Kimmel got what he wanted. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. he, he got, got he views got... to his YouTube channel. Even and if they got like nasty he... comments, they still watched it. They yeah, still commented had, on it. He has something called reading mean celebrities reading mean tweets. He is now reading mean tweets from himself to himself mm-hmm. from the guys who are saying these things. And again, he's saying that he's going to have YouTubers on to explain it to him, but I, I don't think that's going to work at all because he's he's made up his mind already. So let him go, let him do his own thing. Let him go. Maybe Jimmy, maybe uh, Stephen Colbert would like it. I don't know, but just stop. Hey, he's on But yeah, go go to uh, Riz Plays Games, and I will post the correct link on uh insert point to begin uh sorry sorg for you uh clicking that for you uh i messed up on that one and sent uh, happy happy joy joy to you which is really weird happy happy joy hmm. joy uh <clears throat> back to you here's the thing oh, go ahead Chuch. here's the thing jimmy kimmel knows exactly what he's doing mm-hmm. yes exactly um we spent far too long talking about this uh, mm-hmm. Because Jimmy Kimmel wants us to talk about this. Yep. Oh yeah. And he gets, he, gets this site. he has made an entire career of doing things to get reactions, page views. <laughs> an entire career. I, even if you go back to whatever it was he was doing before the Man Show. Oh. Uh, when Ben signs money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he knows exactly what he's doing. So. He, he wins. Alright, um, guys, I'm gonna start a Twitch channel of me just eating delicious, delicious pizza from Slice on Broadway and people living vicariously through me. Mm, yes. So what do you think about that idea? I think you should call it Channel Nom, and I think it should be sponsored just like this podcast by Slice on Broadway. It's sliceonbroadway.com right. here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh, along the tracks in Beachview or on the Main Street down in Carnegie, PA. Great stuff. Great stuff. 
fresh ingredients. Check out the Gonzo. It's not on the menu, but you probably hate I keep saying this, but go ask for the Gonzo as well. Uh, we have people that are contributing to some of the other podcasts here on the network, and we're going to go have lunch with them. Uh, and and, and they're going to check out the Slice on Broadway in person as well that we keep talking about every week. So please go check them out. Support the show. Uh, let them know you heard about them on The Boss Battle by insertcointobegin.com pgh underscore slice on the twitter as well as on the instagrams and the facebooks and we're going to check out what happened last week in sorgatron media and be right back watching these ladies on here and i'm sorry mm-hmm. ladies i don't know who you are mm-hmm. but it, it's it's interesting to see what they're doing to try to improve their appearances mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just very interesting to watch. <laughs> it's She's like trying funny. to make real life filters is fun to watch we were uh, hardcore homecoming and uh i'm sitting next to sabu and uh, he, he's eating tuna, and I'm like, he's like, you got a fork. And I look in the bag, and, and there's a, a new Jack, one of New Jack's forks in the bag, and it's got blood from the night before. And I'm like, yeah, but it's got blood on it. And, and before I could even say, yeah, dude, but it's got blood on it, Sabu starts eating the tuna with his fork, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, that's how, wow. that's how out of your mind this business has put you. Like all the scenes are hand painted. Wow. I don't know how. <laughs> All the scenes are hand painted. That's what they were touting. Yeah, and technology risk. It really pops. It really mm-hmm. looks like a, an actual scene from a storybook. But uh, if you have an idea of what we can do on our no. end, in a no. call with Sonny. <laughs> Absolutely not. In a call with Sonny. No, no, I just want to hear the ideas. And this trumps any conversation we've had. Because it seems that our guest has a promo video for Bar Jutsu. Um, with Sunny in it. Um, oh. right, we sure did a lot of them things this week, didn't we, Sword? Mm-hmm, them things. All right. Uh, now it's time for the final battle question, final round question, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we all know that Fallout 4 is going to be a big, massive game. Mm-hmm. Well, we didn't think it was going to be this big. Uh, Fallout 4's dialogue library is twice the size of Skyrim and Fallout 3's dialogue library combined. Yes, combined. Both those games together don't equal Fallout 4's dialogue library. Uh, keep in mind, though, that uh, ne- neither Fallout 3 nor Skyrim's main character could talk apart from Dragon Shouts mm-hmm. and Skyrim. Uh, this will probably factor into the game since you can have either a male or a female protagonist now, and they do talk in the game. Um, and your robot assistant can call you almost any name you want. Uh, there's some pretty bad ones out there that I've heard that that can call you. (laughs) Um, but I'm sure that a lot of the dialogue is story driven as well. Uh, which brings us to the final round question. Are you happy that video games are becoming so large or do you prefer the days when games are short and to the point? Who wants to go first? I, I, I think that's a, a, a loaded question, to be honest with you. Because a, a game can be long, mm-hmm. but it needs to be interesting in that time frame. Mm-hmm. They, they, they don't need to be... I mean, if, even if they're short and interesting, I will be interested in that. But if they're just long and drawn out and nothing happens <clears throat> destiny um it would it wouldn't really like want me to i don't want to play it for a while again i'm i'm and again this is me t- coming from the guy who uh played la noir and hated it from start to finish and i just yeah, finished the game um, it's lemons <clears throat> it, it's, it's just analyze like, the lemon no this 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 belongs here. Put it down. Uh, but <laughs> but it, it, I just want to be entertained. I don't care if it's a long long game or a short game. I just want to be entertained by it. Mm-hmm. That's all. I I like games that are more movie sized. Like I don't want to sit down. Like you guys know, I walk hey, Bobby, away from Bobby, games all when, the time. When was when was the when was the last uh, movie sized video game that you beat? Um, probably back Bioshock? in the NES days. No, it a, no, that's not a movie-sized video game. So, it's it's. It looked it like a movie. Long. It was long. Bioshock was pretty long. I'm talking like a game that you can sit down and just beat in like one thing, like the old NES games. Mm-hmm. Like you beat it, you're done with it. Move on. 
No, I'm not talking about Rampage, which was I I almost spent 24 hours playing that game, and then to get to the end of the game, and it says thank you for playing, and that's it, <laughs> and then it just starts all over again. It's terrible, but uh, yeah, I, I do tend to like the shorter games. Um, I know the Call of Duty games. A lot of people give them grief for being kind of short. I like that. Um, I do like the longer games if, like, like Riss said, if they hold my attention. Yeah. You know, I mean. I'm not gonna sit there and play a game if I'm like, like. I need like, to. What's go that back. Civil War game that was that was even that's re, that was really short that just came out like last year. Oh, you mean the World War Two game? No, no, no. It was uh, like uh, something Hearts, Vandal Hearts. No, it they, okay. it was like something 1884. Oh, okay. And <clears throat> they even said this is a very short game. And I don't, I, I, I honestly, I didn't play it, so I don't want to know, like, if I would be interested in it. But I, I probably would say, if you put a gun in my head, you go short or long. Which game would you like to play? I would go with the long game, because mm-hmm. unless it's like a story based. If you have the time, yeah. If I have the time, Grand Theft Auto, that's going to hold your attention because because mm-hmm. that's an open world. Yeah. Like, that's another thing. If it's an open world scenario, I would have more time invested in that game because there's so much stuff to look at. Do what you want, come back to the story, yeah. go away from the story, come back to it. You know. Exactly. You know, just punch, pe- punch random people in the face, uh, in video games, uh, and just, you know, have fun just roaming a gigantic open world. I wouldn't like a long story based. But an, a long open world scenario where that that occurs would be an awesome thing to have, and I think Fallout Fallout Four is going to be so much fun. I'm going to be spending so much time playing this game. <laughs> All right, Chachi, anything to add? I I agree with Riz. I I like the the giant open world games, um, but I don't think I would prefer. Uh, a super long story based game like Destiny annoying as hell <laughs> um, but uh, Grand Theft Auto World of Warcraft Skyrim those types of games yes longer is better mm-hmm. that's what she said <laughs> Sorg, anything? Well, uh, of course, uh, as you guys know, I, I have kind of a limited time base here. Uh, mm-hmm. So I appreciate the games where uh, more movie-based, as you were kind of talking about. Like, I like the Bioshock Infinite. I like the Tomb Raider. Um, and, and even if you're looking at something like uh, Assassin's Creed or, or GTA, like Assassin's Creed, the first one, I was like, oh, this is taking forever, and I started getting bored with it. Then I realized which missions I didn't have to do to progress the story and just blew through the rest of it. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, blew through. I also, when I sit down on the rare, I, I, I seriously get to sit down for a couple hours with something like Tomb Raider, a couple hours, once a week, hopefully, maybe every other couple of weeks. That's just where I'm at right now. So I want there to be, I want to feel like I didn't waste my freaking time butting my head up against the wall trying to solve a puzzle, beat a guy, figure something out, not make a jump or something stupid like that, right? Uh, you know, so so something that has the right level of progress makes me feel accomplished after sitting two hours down with the game. Um, that's why I, I'm not playing something like Metal Gear Revengeance. I'm stuck on a boss, and I'm just like, I'll come back to it in six months and probably beat the boss like nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bold yeah. Storm's another one I just kind of pick up for a little bit, go, go through a couple waves of guys, and I'll pick it up later. I'm like a third through that game. Uh, something like the Lara Croft Go, where, where I can just you know m- go through a couple boards uh, you know, when I have a couple minutes here or there, or, 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 or just like go, go ham on Pac-Man, you know? I mean, that's where I'm at right now. Um, so when I get to something like a GTA or like I mentioned Assassin's Creed, again, I want to get through the, 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 the game. And then if I feel like I want more from the game, I'll go back and do those side missions. And I really Ooh. haven't even gotten into GTA online. So Ooh. I'm just like, okay, I got through that. I accomplished something there. And again, maybe I'll step back into it later. Who knows? I got a lot of games on my list to try to tick off. So, but GTA Online would probably make you hate GTA Online. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it would. Because yeah. yeah. you step outside your apartment, you get, you get run over, yeah. shot, yeah. like beat up, run over again. 
it's just a vicious cycle story. <laughs> it is. Okay. Okay. So don't bother. Don't bother. I, uh, is I mean, it just unless like... you have me as as the passenger, right, Chachi? Yeah. Unless you have Riz there to give you the finger <laughs> the entire time you're doing a mission, <laughs> it, it's not really worth it. Nice. Yeah, um, if you're going to hijack a, a semi truck full of chemicals uh, for the money. Uh, I, I recommend. I highly recommend that you take Riz for you with you um, to add to that mission. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I am key to that mission. Yes, you, I could not have could not have accomplished that mission without Riz there giving me the figure. <laughs> I mean, they they've added they've added some new cool uh, create create a, a mission or whatever mm-hmm. type scenario like. A team death match, which is just fists, which is punching people in the face, or 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 one where you're on top of some structure and you have rocket launchers, and the other team has Humvees, and they jump they they jump off like ledges at you, and you have to shoot them, and it, it, it's it's a, those are fun time wasters, but. The, I, they've dropped the like. Do you think Destiny was bad? GTA dropped the ball on on <laughs> stuff like that. But just to just to enjoy the open world is cool. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the, the if game stay, and stuff if you like can stay that. Stay long enough to see it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's why I recommend buying a giant helicopter. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for us this week. You can follow us on Twitter at InsertCoinTV. You can visit us at InsertCoinToBegin.com. New articles going up daily. And you can join us live every Tuesday night at 8 on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, Sorg, do you have any plugs? Check out everything at sorgatronmedia.com. we got so many shows coming up. Awesome cast. We talked about a lot of cool tech stuff. we got a few announcements, some uh, special events coming up, some interviews, uh, including Evening with PodCamp. They'll be coming up on Sorgatron Media. And we have so many geeky shows that you guys will enjoy. Uh, so please uh, uh, check out everything else. Sign up for the newsletter and continue supporting us for coin2begin.com. Chachi Plugs. Chachi says on the Twitter... Okay. Riz plugs. Uh, Riz plays games on Twitter. Riz plays games on YouTube. Riz plays games on Twitch. Chachi uh, plays. Chachi says on Twitter. And that's it. Bobby, back to you. All right. And I'm at Bobby at Town on Twitter. You can follow me there. That's going to do it for us. Game over, guys. Game over. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.